Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Today we're going to do a, a medium-sized fly catcher type bird called the Says Phoebe. And I painted one of this, I think, in one of my birds, my Garden of Birds books. I did uh, like five or six uh, series of books on the techniques, specific techniques that I use for painting birds. So, And all the links to all of those things, you can go over to our Amazon store right down below the video here will give you the links to some of those because some of those is sometimes some of you like to look at it in a book and you can see the step-by-step -step process like the painting like we're going to do today will have probably 80 step photos step-by-step -step with instructions on what is exactly the step process that I do when I paint those birds so you can go look at that there's a lot of them over there so what I have here here's the says Phoebe here's the photograph that I got of it from Adobe Stock Photo. I purchased it from Adobe Stock Photo so we can use it. And uh, then I put it up on a board. Now this board is 14 inches this way, 14 inches this way. I thought it would make a beautiful square painting. And it's nice to have some various sizes of these paintings. The background here, I made it um, from uh, the uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of blue, green, and white, just to make about a value seven or so. Let's just check that just to make sure yeah it's right between an eight and a seven right there it's real close it's right about about seven and a half is what it is on the value scale and these value scales again those of you that want to have those download those you can go over to our Janssen Art Studio and you'll see it on all the JanssenArtStudio.com we have links to all the videos we have links to all the palettes I use how to mix color and you can download these value scales in different colors, reds, yellows, blues, whites, grays, and um, white is gray. But <laughs> you can download them and you can uh, print them off and keep them for your studio, okay? All right. So he's about real size. The real size Phoebe is, is about six to seven inches. And this one here is, is about six and a half inches here. So from the beak to the tip of the tail. So he's about a real size of it. And then I was looking up at, you know, what, what he is. Obviously, it's an old dead uh, spent uh, flower that he is uh, sitting on. And I think it might be a black-eyed Susan. We have a lot of those out here. And um, they look exactly pretty much like that when they're gone. And this picture was taken in New Mexico and their black-eyed students are all over New Mexico as well. I'm not real sure, but we'll paint it as one. All right, so here's my color, my palette of colors that I'm going to use today. The, again, the list of all these colors and everything are down in the video description. I also have out a little bit of the Derivan Open Medium, which I like to use for some feathering. I have a cap full of my Extender Medium. This is the Heritage Extender Medium, you know, that our company makes. And um, it uh, is used to slow down the drying, but it also thins the paint. So I use the open medium when I want the colors thick. I use the extender when I want them thin, okay? And all the color listings there are, are for you down below, all right? All right. Now, as far as the the actual drawing that I do there, and I, there's... I really do promote a lot of drawing. Drawing is part of the three things that I say artists need when you're going to start a painting. But beginners, I have a lot of beginners on the channel here now, and you're writing me, and I want to show you again how I suggest to my beginners that they begin something like this. You print off the photo to about the size that you want to have it, and here it's about seven inches from the tip of the beak and six and a half to the tip of the tail. Then you take this. This is a, a clear plastic, uh, I, I believe it's like Durafilm or something like that. You can get it on Dick Blick, you can get it on Amazon, and you can buy it in big rolls, small rolls. And you put that over the uh, the actual drawing that you're going to do. And then I use these. These are a this is, this is called a zebra pen. It's a Japanese pen. It is instantaneously permanent, so it doesn't smear. So I take off the pattern, basically, or the drawing of it here. And then when you're done with that, you put it up onto your board here. You tape it into positions you want, and then you use this. This is a, a just a torn off sheet. This is an artist transfer paper. It's called transfer paper. It's not carbon paper. 
It's transfer paper. It erases really easy, or you can use mineral spirits to take it off. I usually just paint right over it. And you put that underneath it, go over your lines, and then you will transfer your, your, uh, your drawing there. And I do this with all my beginners, actually with a lot of my artists, my first year artists, even second year artists, I always recommend you do this because it, it's, I want you to concentrate on color and technique. Drawing will come with time and we'll, we'll work on those skills, but color and technique is what I always like people to concentrate on first. The three elements, color, technique, and drawing. And color and technique, you know, you want to make sure that your drawing is exactly correct and you can check it with that plastic and then we know it's either a color or a technique problem so we can uh, we can fix those problems that's how i like to do it there's others that will disagree with me and that's fine but i i start my beginning students off with studying the color and the technique transferring an, an image and then we slowly work into drawing skills all right let's get going so when we're going to go over and look at the Says Phoebe, I have it up also here on a big monitor. That's where I really like to look at it because I see a, a tremendous amount more tones in that than I do on this one right here. I come in and I try to find the shadows, the modeling shadows of each area of the Phoebe, and I'm going to work this as an auto prima from shadows to light. So, And I'm going to use, let's use... You can use a filbert or you can use a fusion a fusion filbert or a flat i think i'll use a filbert today and i use this is a number six and then this is a number two and this is my favorite birding brush this is a number four round fusion round and uh, it just does tremendous uh, um, detail work and so what i'm going to do here i'll just use some water with this i'm going to look for and look to my darker tones that I have into the painting. So I want to I want to come in here and I want to find some of the darker tones that I'll have it. And I know I've painted this Says Phoebe before. This is Darulite Yellow and a little bit of the Burnt Sienna. And you get those undertones that are right there. If you want to gray it at all, you add just a tiny touch of the green and that grays it and gives you a, a, a beautiful color as well. So the difference of those colors there. And let's come in right in here, uh, out onto the tail coverts, the, the base of the tail here, and we'll go ahead and push and put that on. Let's go uh, and vary that tone. So I'll vary it. Maybe I'll go to, uh, I'm a big, a big advocate of varying tone. Let's go a little burnt sienna and a little... Uh, yellow oxide this will make that color more opaque and it can oh and it can also over you know can cover up some of your drawing lines and stuff and let's just drag some of this right up through here up underneath the wing as the shadow and i always always over paint an area putting in more color than what i actually see and then i paint out what i don't need that's how i like to do it now, as we round down, let's gray that just a bit. Maybe even you could use a little open medium or a little extender. I like them to just, just to cause the color to slide a little bit. And we'll leave this just short. So this is the undertone. So you look through some of the colors and see that real grayish undertone right in there, grayish greenish undertone right there. That's what I'm looking for into this bird. And so, you know, the other lighter feathers will sit up on top of this, but this is what I'll do right into here, into this area, okay? So we've put on some undertone, and it's modeled. It's not perfect. It's modeled. Modeled means that it's not smooth. You can see highs and lows to it, and that's what I want. Let's go up here to the top. Now, that is going to be a kind of a, you know, the Sage Phoebe is kind of a bluish gray. So let's take, you know, blue and your complement, your, a beautiful complement to the blue that we use on our palette is the the uh, naphthol red light and that makes beautiful grays and see you can make variations of reddish to bluish grays here really easy and um, that would be a, a great tone actually we come right in here and you'll see that is probably the gray tone that you see right there onto the bird okay 
and that would work very nice. The other way to do it that I like to do it is to use burnt sienna, which is a more toned version of it, of the blue, uh, uh, basically of a red. But the reason why I use it, and I'm going to go a little darker, is because I just used burnt sienna in the other part of the bird. So in its as an artist, I'm always thinking harmony. Harmony is how you touch, how you tie your colors together. Now, some artists will say you use a mother color, and the old artists like the Dutch masters and stuff did that. I like to tie it together by having some common common colors within my painting. And so if burnt sienna becomes a common color to all of my colors, in other words, basically all my colors have some burnt sienna in it, then I'm going to get that, that color. So it's not as dark, but you can see that color works as well. They're very, very similar to each other. Um, those of you that study color theory with me, you're going to see that difference in, you know, in those colors, and that's okay. We're going to reduce the white, make this just slightly onto the blue side, and a little bit darker is what I'm looking for right in there. That color right in there you see that okay so and now let's see where do we see that we see that as a mark that's going to come right up here above his eye and so we'll paint this in we'll put some of that mark of that color in here maybe a little bit of it going up and around here up onto his cap um, we might have some of it here on his um, these are his primary secondaries and uh, tarsals, and you have also coverts here, right in here. So we'll go right into this area right in here. Let's put some of that following what would be his feathers. Now, I'm not doing a lot of drawing specific because I want some of these colors and these tones to override each other, which will give you a really beautiful harmony. I want them to override each other, uh, crossing each other, and let's go around the beak here just a bit, okay? And uh, so I want that to come in and over here, and I want, and put on extra, right? We always put on extra. I'm going to add just a little bit of extender to this so it thins it out, so it moves, and we'll just, I'm not going to paint the individual feathers yet. I will on this one because I want this to be more of a portrait study of him, but um and I want that just a little bit more blue, not quite as, as burnt sienna, just a little bit more blue here. So I'm dark and see how I just keep I get away from that white and I darken it right on down. So let's darken some of this down and we'll add some of the streaks, which will be his secondaries here, maybe even out to his primaries. There'll be some light little light hits and stuff out here on these primary flight feathers, but we won't put those in yet. Maybe a nice dose of dark. Where do you see it? Like right underneath that wing right there. So let's just go ahead and add a little mark of that there. Okay, so you're looking for those darks. And if you want to, you know, put a bit of that dark right out here just so that you know you did it. Keep it kind of modeled in there. That's great. There'll be a smaller mark. And what I'm going to do, what I like to do if I'm going to do detail is lean my hand on a little stick here. The old world painting, we called these the mall stick. And I just use a just a flat piece of wood. And I'll push this out. It just helps steady your hand. I'll push some of the dark that's going to come right around that area, maybe a mark or so pulling down. Just that dark, that's what I'm looking for. Now, so I've got quite a bit. Now we can put some, uh, we can move from the darks. Let's put the final darks down in here. Now to get that blue, we want to have blue burnt sienna and a little burnt sienna in it and then some red violet because that makes this more of a purplish dark, almost a black here. And let's go ahead and add some of that right down here onto this tail. And maybe just a touch lighter mark above that for that other, that other tail feather right there. And I'm going to let these basically sit kind of, kind of blurred to the edge. 
I don't want this to be, you know, absolutely perfect out there. I want to blur it out a bit. But that's a beautiful dark, and I'm going to rinse this brush out and go to my smaller, a smaller painting one, like my little number two here. That little dark, and some get some violet, red violet in the, red violet in the blue. Red violet, blue, and green here is one of the darkest, grayest colors that you can make on this palette, and it's just about black. But I'm going to use the chisel here, right here, and just put in the lower dark of that beak there. And we might as well use this to touch into the eye. Now, in a lot of the bird lessons you see me, I, I've changed in the last few years how I paint the birds. And I like to first set in a little burnt sienna. And most of it will paint out, but I like to set into the eye a little burnt sienna first and then I paint about 80 to 90 percent of that out so even though I don't see that in the actual photo that burnt sienna I put that in because I like that little touch of warmth in there and then I come back and I'll tap out or paint out very carefully here some of the the dark and leave just I know it's hard to see but the tiniest little bit of burnt sienna in there and I like that and uh, I might even put that darker mark that you see right there maybe a mark or two of this around these little facial feathers there so we see that and you see this little kind of a they, they always have a lot of the birds Especially the, the, the flycatchers have a little band of light coming, or the dark coming right out from behind the eye. And there we go. Now, let's, um, let's move up to a medium tone, okay? So for a medium tone, what we want to do is come right about in there. Uh, and I'll go back to my large brush here for just a minute. Let's key off of that burnt sienna nice warm lighten this up a bit now light just take this and lighten it up and it can be a little mottled in other words a little bit more blue here I mean a little bit more burnt sienna there a little bit more blue here you can even add a little touch of the yellow oxide see these are all just mottled grays that are gonna just look great for the bird and we're a little dark we're a little dark and a little blue, so let's just add a touch of yellow and a touch of white to that. And let's just see where we are here now. And we're right about right where that is on that particular bird. And again, we'll model here. And let's just come right back here and we'll add some of the boy. That's just right about that background color. So that's good. And we'll add some of that right in there and you know even though you don't see it too much go ahead and add it break up the other colors so add that in then we'll lighten this up let's go quite a bit lighter not so here's pure white I'm just gonna drop it down a little bit here's pure white and this is about the color we had see I step off to the side so I can see my definition of my colors here and let's put this right down here, a nice little light stroke. And you see how much lighter it appears here onto this back here. So that's the light that I'm looking for into here. Now I gotta soften it out. Now, there's many ways to do it. What I like to do is I'll put that light on and let's just tap a few areas where we know that light's gonna go. We know that light's gonna come right down here onto his chin area right here, right down there. It's going to follow this curvature here of his neck or his head right in there, right? And we can even use some of this light right now if we want to hit the edges of this top wing coverts here, the smaller covert feather, feathers that cover the wing. Maybe even uh, we can use the chisel here and start putting on some light on the ends of these guys here. these, And we'll paint the feathers there in just a minute. Now, I'm here and I'm here, I'm gonna create a half tone. And I want a, a color right in between the two, maybe a little different, let's warm it. Maybe a bit of yellow in here to uh, warm that. 
and we'll walk right into both of them here. Move both of them out like that. Okay, and you can see, and I'd like to leave those marks maybe a little darker, just a bit, and so I'll work back and forth. Now, if you want this to stay wet, here you go. Add some open medium to this, and it'll stay wet. You know, if I'm painting a bird that I want a lot of interest in, I don't worry about it staying wet. I, I like to paint dry acrylic on dry, and I, I make little, little uh, marks with the brush, which creates the feather. So I don't blend. That's the one thing I don't do is I don't blend. I'm not a blender. I'm a tone painter. I'm going to go back to the light here, back up to my light, and I'm going to reset my light here a little bit more right in here and walk that through now that I have that other color there see and I'll walk and I'm just watching about how much is being used he's got little light tips out here let's just go ahead and give some of that and let's just tap through some of that light again right in through there okay and so we see a little bit of light there, maybe not quite as light. So let's just drop it down. Just tap into this a bit here. Drop it down a bit. And maybe some smaller marks right in there. Some line marks right there. And so I, this is how I like to approach it. I'm, that's my big, big brush. I'm going to go back down to my two, which will make him more feathered up. So let's go back up here to a medium gray. And let's add a few marks of this right through. And this is where I'll touch right into that light and take some of it out as it's painting up on the top of his head there. And if you want to make those marks, like, you know, up on the top of his head, around his beak, are the smallest feathers on the bird. They're just like little downy feathers. And so you emulate that by just small touches. Just small little touches here. And you'll go back with the dark, and then I'll come back with some light on my brush. And I'll hit a few marks here. Small, little marks. Kind of following the contour of the turning of his head. Let's get out even lighter right out here, out towards the end of these little feathers here. Let's put some of that. Now, put on too much. See, I always put on too much. Then I come back with a slightly different gray, and I'll paint into that, taking it out. And sometimes I wipe my brush in between so I don't, you know, paint out too much. Sometimes I just go ahead and just keep tapping into it. Now, let's give that a little bit more of a point right out here to him on that head right there a little bit more white a little bit more light color right out here point that up a bit more there we go and a little bit of gray so I love to work back and forth and you see when I work tones like this because you don't see me blending I work tones like this what I'm actually doing is putting on small little marks and you can see here's my bird and I've got interest tones bluer yellow warmer a little bit more red right there and this is what gives the interest to your bird switching these tones and if you want them to stay wet on your palette add a little open medium to it and they'll stay wet I don't mind mixing I never have and so if they dry up on me I mix them up again so I'll put some of that there Let's go a little bit lighter, right with the edge of the brush. Now, also with this detail, the, the round works great, but this little two has a nice chisel edge on it for this size of bird, so it works pretty well here. And I can add a bit of this detail here that's coming right around the, t the edge of the bird here, and I uh, paint it back, paint it. And let's even take some of that dark, that darker violet. A little bit of red into it, maybe. Always a little bit of burnt sienna into that. 
nice dark, slightly different dark than I've used before. And let's just tap down into that to create some of that softer movement of the color, see? And, uh, and I haven't even gone to my real detail yet of that. Number four, let's just wipe. So I pinch wipe my brush. That's how I, I don't clean it. You haven't seen me clean anything with water. I pinch wipe my brush and I go back into some lighter color here that'll allow me to pull down and add a little bit more light. Maybe a little streaky light right there. And see a little bit of red came out in there and I like that. But I'll, I'll break that with just a, a mark or two of gray as well. Just to break that. And when you get the most interest is you go back and forth a couple times. Now, it's more work, guys. I know it is. But that's what makes the beautiful birds is taking that extra couple marks and extra little bit of time it takes to make marks with just a slight bit of difference to them. And that's what makes them really pretty. You know, so... He, you know, for me as an artist, as a production painter, I have to determine just how much time I'm going to paint or put into a bird like this. Now, let's put that, uh, just add a little extender to this and just set it down for a few minutes. Let's go into my detail brush here. This is my detail brush. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to take some of this lighter color right on the point. This has an amazing point on this brush. And what I'm going to do is come right in here very carefully with the eye ring. The eye ring is a lower light that sits basically there. And it's going to be a little more gray as I go up to the top up here. And if I want to paint a bird that has a tremendous amount of interest, I might take this and add a few little marks, smaller marks, up and around this area. Because this is the point at which there's a lot of smaller feathers on that bird. So we might take a little bit of light. It's not like using a liner brush because the brush can flare out a little bit and give you some differences and looks and stuff so that's why I like this because it's a super soft uh, brush and I'll just blur that just a bit super soft brush and you can use it I'll add a little extender here if it starts to dry up just add a little extender I'll use it to kind of create some of this movement around this area of his face. Let's pull a little more dark in there. And this is and see how I flatten that brush off just a bit. And that's going to give me a different type of mark here as I pull some of this down. And I'll work when I work up a, a bird that I want to have a lot of interest to. Let's take some of this extender and dark. But when I work a bird that I want to have a lot of interest to, um, I work the colors back and forth several times. Small little marks. Tap some small little darks right in there. You can see slightly more gray coming down just a bit from there. There we go. Get lots of those colors in there and small little marks, small little light marks. Repeat them again and again here. Tap through to create the little tips, some of the forward hair or the smaller hair there. Let's just pull through down one right through here. There we go. Just a nice, let's put a a little bit warmer gray here, a little bit of yellow, but more of a gray, slightly darker coming down underneath this part of his eye. It has a little more burnt sienna blue into that. Right underneath, you can see it's a little bit redder of a gray. We'll paint right up by that eye ring right up in there, okay. 
And uh, a bit of that goes right up on top, back up here. And a bit of that gray moving through here. That makes the beautiful mottled color of his head here. You can blend or push your finger in that to push that out a bit. But this is what I'll do to work some of the little detail. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see in some of the other videos, some of the birds I'll spend a lot of time creating some really nice interest into the bird, varying the grays. Really nice little interest up into their front. Little feather movements right up here like this that goes through that gray right in there. And... Uh, and then there's others I paint quite a bit faster just to get to, just to make the statement of the bird. And I don't need to worry about too much other little stuff. I just make a quick statement of the bird. So there you see. Now, and this is a technique I use a lot. And let me show you on his wing. I call it painting the wing feathers. And I like the open medium for this. But this is what I do is... I'll come in here like this on the point and then I slowly set the round down like this. And I'm not going to count the feathers. I'm just going to pull some of these in like this. Okay. And then I take that other gray, another, another gray here and some light about the value that I'm looking for here. It's just a touch lighter than that. So I just test it on the bird. What I'm looking for is this color right here. And it's just a touch redder or more burnt sienna than what I have here. A little open medium. Load the brush up with this. And then I paint backwards again. This time I push down and then I lift off, pulling down, putting that dark and painting out on each one of these feathers the area of the feather that I don't need, leaving that little tip there, see? And then you can come back with a, a, a touch of thinner white. Me, my brush is getting full there, so I'll rinse this out. And when I'm painting like this with the bird, if I rinse that out, I'll put a little bit of extender back in here. I don't want water to enter into my painting because water is the solvent. And I don't want that, so let's get this nice little uh, detailed line right here. And so you can use this, pick up a little more light. If you want to make the feathers absolutely perfect, you repeat this step a couple times. And I'm not going to put in all the feathers. As a matter of fact, I'm going to reduce the amount here. There's more feathers on the original and I'm not going to paint all of those but see then I just paint out like this and then that paints out that feather and then I can uh, put in some light right around here on these little covert feathers here just put in some light coming up right up over those and then let's just take some gray Right with that, a little lighter gray, or a little darker than what I put on, just a little darker. And we'll paint down to those here, right like that. Maybe a little darker here. And we'll paint these mantles, the look of the mantle coming down to those, okay. Just like this. Lift off. Touch, lift off there. And you can put that curvature kind of the wing that comes here with that light here. Just like that. A little bit of gray to soften those edges there. Paint down into that. I have a tiny bit darker and you can just, you just put a little open medium in this. It just stays wet a long time with that open medium. But you can poke back up in there and paint out a bit. 
and add some darker little gray movement to those feather lines there. If you want them to be more perfect, point up your brush a little, grab your light, add a, if you're gonna do a lot of detail work, this is very important. If you're gonna do a lot of detail work, add extender to it, not the open medium. The extender will allow you to keep your brush pointed and the color to flow. Why? Because the extender is thinner, it will cause the color to flow a little bit more. So you can come in here and do a little more detail work if you want to, to get some of that light, those light little edges there. A little bit more light. Work those one more time. Push these down here. And I like to I like to emulate them more than anything else. And I want to get um, a little darker right in here, pulling down this way, which is the the feeling of that wing motion feathers, the covering, the mantle there, and. So you can see though, you can pull, and if I want to give it more of the feathery look, I lift up the brush. So I'm using just the tip of that little feather uh, that thing. See how it creates more of a feathery look? And I can do that with the light as well. So you lift up, don't push very hard. Just lightly drag over the surface here, don't push. And that will give you more of a feathery look there to the bird. Let's um. Bring this back through there, and we'll reset some of that dark. So you see, I like to paint them a couple times here. When I'm doing more of a portrait, you know, of the bird, I like to do it a few times. Let's get some of this reddish kind of color down in there. Reddish gray in there. That's going good. And I have his light on the top part of his eye here, a little bit too light, so I'll drop that in. And then let's get just a touch more dark right up in the very front of that eye. There we go. And let's give him the, uh, with just the tip, not pure white, a little bit of gray. We'll give him his little catch light right up here, just a little mark of it, of that catch. I know that's very hard to see. It's very, very hard to see, but it's awesome. <laughs> you gotta have fun painting these guys. I love painting these guys here. And sometimes I have to use my little magnifiers when they're this small, just so I don't, so I can get it in the right place here. And uh, there we go, oh, not quite, almost. Maybe just a touch more. And if you get too much, you know, don't let it worry you. Just take it out like I've got just a touch too much playing with it. Just a touch too much. And you can see he's a touch lighter than that other one there. But that's not a bad thing. You can leave it. If you like it, don't be afraid to leave it. And I'll just take out with just a touch of dark. Let's use the lighter, a little bit more of a medium to light gray here. We'll put the uh, line for the top of the beak here, right down, slow, lift off. Let's give it a little bit of light interest, little shine. And actuality on him, he, you know, some of this gray, because of the lighting and stuff, will appear just slightly bluer. So you can actually blue up that gray just a bit of that light and put a touch of that pulling through right there. It's kind of nice on him. Um, I might, just because the my background's a little bit more blue-gray and the, the photo's a little more, more red, I might just light that up a bit more so his beak comes off of that a touch more than uh, what you see there. And then I'll pick up a touch more light and I'll come through and make some smaller little additions and touches. Like I like to 
tap around the eyes, tap around the little tips of the feathers. Now this is when I'm doing more of a portrait of a bird. See how I just drag the little tip here of this brush. It just does a great job in feathering him up. And I might use a slightly different gray here, light, warmer here. Let's uh, push some other lights, smaller little feathers right in here. See how it just creates a smaller little movement of the feathers. A touch lighter, some of this. And you know, it's, it's all down to how much, how much you're gonna do into it. But I love the point of this and I like to flatten, see how it's slightly flattened? And I'll use this brush almost like the point to a chisel to create little feathers around. That's why I love this little number four for painting birds. It's my favorite of all bird painting brushes. And so in the books, those of you that get the books, you'll see I'll show you a bunch of different ways to use this little number four to create all kinds of feathering techniques, what I call feathering techniques. So we'll look them up. Let's just move that through just a bit. There we go. And uh, just a touch of a, and see, I just used it, see I flatten it out, it gets real wispy like that, see? And I just drag this over slightly and it'll break up solid edges of color and make it look more like, like feathers, okay? So we can take some of this light. Now, how much work you're gonna do down onto these? I generally like when I paint them, I don't do a lot of work, but you can you know, start to uh, add some, and of course back here with these secondaries, they'll be a little larger, you know, here. So I'll add some light, which will go on to these secondaries here. And since he's a solo in here, I don't have a, you know, when I paint them with a lot of flowers, roses, and, you know, stuff, I don't uh, give a lot of this detail because it tends to uh, pull away from the flowers. But when I do a portrait here that, you know, he's going to sit here with a couple of just little spent things, I'll put some of this in. I'm not going to, I'm going to let this drag like this so that my feathering is not going to be perfect. And then I'll create, let's just mix up a little different gray and maybe a little open medium. If I want it thicker and stick, I add the open medium here. Let's go just a touch darker. That's kind of a pretty color and that's very close to what we have right there. So, and I'll just paint out, coming into reverse here and paint out leaving the little light tips there. And so we'll poke up here, paint out, leaving that little light tip. Paint out, leaving that little light tip. Let's pull some of this down here. And again, I'll, I won't be perfect. And I also like to, so I, I use that one, but I also, as I get to bigger feathers, I like to use this little, and I pick up like this, I pick up a little edge of the uh, white like this, and I use that to basically draw that feather. And then you paint out, you paint out what you don't need. So I'll put some of that on. I'll come back with some dark. It's a little too blue right there, so with some dark paint. Oh, slipped off on my thing there. But it's it's okay to have some of those little burbles and stuff like that here. We're gonna, you know, you can see on the original the heavy light outlines and sometimes on the birds, you know, I find that to be really distracting. And so I start eliminating a little bit of it Let's take some of this light. Let's come down this uh, mantle here. Mantle feathers, right down there. 
And in actual, like on these little secondaries, you can see, if you look real close, you can see that little feather pulling down like that, which you can do, but that's a lot of little detail work that I normally don't do. But you can just, and I'm just going to emulate a few of them here. Not a ton, just a few of them here. And uh, I'll come back through in a few areas with a little lighter. Slightly different brush this time. It's going to give me a different mark. Let's look to the, the back here. And put in some other marks here. Just like that. Maybe a bit more up here. I'm watching my... See, I want these little streaks. And I use the brush very light. So it's just barely touching the surface. And that's what creates that little feathery look. There. Like that. And... Maybe uh, let's get just a touch more light here, right in here. Then if I was doing a super accurate portrait, I might turn around and do it all again. And you might even change your tools a little bit. But see, I'll paint that on, and then I'll take a bit of that gray and paint down into it, taking just tapping through and taking a little bit of it out. And that's what starts to feather and feather and feather him there. Okay, let's come down to his body. Let's go some yellow oxide, maybe a little bit of the gray, but let's go a little yellow oxide and tap some of that through. So you pick up some of that in him. Right on down, right on down. This is my little number two filbert. I like, and I want to leave some of that burnt sienna, red, darulide kind of color. If you take some of, uh, you know, a bit of it out, too much of it out, just put it back in. Put it back in there. Okay, let's go back to our yellow. I like the yellow oxide, little darulide, little Hansa yellow into it. Let's pull some of that down and through. And see, but I pull and lift and strike it, pull and lift. A bit of that right down in here on that light edge over that tail there. Okay, a little light gray. Light gray. Now with that nice warm yellow here. Right down through, drag over it. And if you want to get more of that lighter little tip of the feathers, which I generally smooth them out a bit, but if you want to, you can use that little number four and give more of that, you know, individual feather that where they look more like the hairs of an animal than the flat of a feather. But I do this. I like to paint back and forth. So I use the chisel and I'll paint back and forth. And rather than doing smaller marks, I paint back and forth with these. And uh, they will it'll start to look like the little feathers, just back and forth. And the back and forth, I find, you know, just gives me more interest overall in the, into, uh, into the bird. I like the interest that it gives to the bird. Let's get a little bit more of this orangey color coming right down there and see I'll reset it do it again get back into some of this gray and reset that gray and each one of that see it gives him a little different look and so you can see a little heavier burnt sienna right in there maybe I want to add that a little heavier burnt sienna mark uh, let's get that a little bit more heavy right in here Okay, a little heavier. That's just good contrast there, see? That's just good contrast. It helps him come to life there. Maybe that becomes, maybe even a tiny bit of blue, which will darken that. And we can use that 
as uh, and re and reset some of this shadow mark right in there. See, it's as you increase those those warm cools of that burnt sienna and blue, the cooler playing against some of that warmer, you get a lot of contrast to your bird. And I've found over the years that temperature is the greatest thing to paint. Light and dark is wonderful, but temperature is the biggie here. There we go. We'll set some of that. And you can, uh, I'll thin this out. You can even see some of that warmer brownish kind of color would work great in the, that back of that tail. But see how I'm letting some of these feathers, I don't. I want the viewer's eye to come up here to these upper feathers. And so I don't want the viewer's eye to go down there and look at an absolutely magnificent tail. I want them to come up here, up towards the front. So I'm gonna add some other little colors, little touches here that's gonna keep bringing that viewer a little farther forward here. Let's take some of that nice dark here. Tap some of that through in there. Maybe uh, this is burnt sienna and blue. A little more dark again right back up in here. Right up around his eye. Could have that a little wider right here. Just tap it so you don't lose. See, it's like you're making the little feather. See, there you go. And that one little mark's a little much there. But um, we can deepen right back behind his eye here too. There, like that. That looks pretty good. Let's um, use this. His feet are very simple. I, you don't see me paint the feet too often. I, I, I try to keep them simple because, and not make them the big pterodactyl claws that they really are. They're huge pterodactyl type claws. I try to keep them very simplistic there. So now there's a couple of things that really make him in, in, into the flycatcher series is that point. He's got like a more of a jet look to his head and here I don't quite have that yet, so I'm going to push that back in. And it's done with a, a, we'll go up and around his eye here with that light again. But it's done mostly by this mark down that gives that that look there to that, that jet kind of look to him here. So we'll add that. Let me go just a touch darker, that burnt sienna and... And add some of that modeling through there. See it, and it's a little bit redder than it is over there, but I like that color. It's picking up this color back through there. And then I'll go slightly lighter here, and let's just model some of that light right up here into the front of his head. Little marks there. That's a little better. He's, um, and part of it is you got a little bit more contrast there, but we could have a touch lighter right up through here, rounding through, which points up his head a bit more. There. That's a little better look to him. You just don't want to have it. Just One of the things is that it's very important, especially with the young bird painters that you know, we tend to round, and he is not round. That's what I want to say more than anything. He is not round, so don't round his head. He's more of an oval here that goes back. So you want to make sure you preserve that. And, you know, take that little bit of light here at the end and preserve that little point out and then this angle back so he has that pointed part. It doesn't show up quite as much as it does on that other background because our background here is very gray, but that's what you want to do. Now we can change that. We can, you know, add some blue and stuff like we do with the other birds and see if we like that. So, you know, here I will take just a light little bit, maybe some of this here and maybe 
put in just like the other, the secondary there of the, that uh, other feather, tail feather, and uh, we'll gray that out. And just paint through that again. Just take some of that out so we give the impression of that in him. Do you want to lighten up his his uh, breast area there anymore? That's going to be up to you. I might do that, but we've got light little yellowish, yellow oxide, white, um, kind of little feathers down through here that we, and I'm not going to give them their super, you know, in the photo you can see them like super fine. I could use that number four to do that, but I'm not going to do that because it's so far away from his head. So I'll put that on and I don't want to, you know, give too much detail so far away from his head. So I'll put that on and then I'll paint back to him just like I do with the feathers, taking some of that out. And again, you can go back and forth. Let's just leave a few little marks here. Or just to say you have that lighter color there. But we might like a, a touch lighter gray right up here into the front as that comes down here. And then you can take some of that out. So I always, I paint too much and then I take a little bit of it out here. Just leave a few of the marks. And that's the way I like to make the birds look like they're feathered. So it's a little heavier than it is over there. It's a little bit more wispy and you can get that if you use that little point of the number four round. If you want to do that, you can get that perfect over there like that. I'm going to leave it like that, I think. And uh, But if you take this little number four round in there, and you could put a few of them. Let's just put a few. I'll show you. I don't want to get carried away here, but you can just make smaller little marks like this. See, and it makes it more feathery, kind of hairy looking. Okay. I like that. I like just a few of them. Just a few of them. Let's just do a few of them. A few of them right through there. There we go. That's pretty good. So that gets him. I could have um, a little bit more gray. I'm being kind of picky here. So right up and around like that. That just jets his eye just a bit more. But, uh, and let's put a tiny mark of some of that dark up there like that. That's pretty good. That's that's close enough to him. You can see the whites of uh, the eye that I have on him it is, and I might take that down just a bit. It's, you know, mine is a, a, a little bit bigger, but yet it's a little bit more friendly. So, you know, the larger white that you put on there, the more, really, the kind of more friendly that he's going to get. So I don't want to take it all out, but I can reduce that just a little bit. There we go. Take him a little bit closer. Now, as far as the, uh, the stems and stuff here, let's get a nice tan. And we have to decide, you know, one of the things I always like to do, now you can leave him here on a gray, and he's a beautiful study on a gray, um, or you can add some color to the background here. And let's just look at that. Let me take a like a one inch, a little bit of blue and white here, and let's gray that down, maybe a bit of warm it down. We'll gray this down. This and maybe even a touch violet. And I'm going to take it probably around a 7 to what almost are. So I look at that. So it's a little lighter than that. It's like an 8. So it'll probably go down to a 7. But this is one of the things I always like to do with my birds. Is I like to give a little idea of blue through some of the painting. And uh, it just causes them to come a bit more to life. So I'm going to use some water with this, thin this out, and pull some of this through here. Come right up to the bird. And if you hit into the bird, don't worry, just put some of your bird back on. That's all you got to do here. 
I just like a little bit of the blue, the sky that kind of shows through, you know, some of my bird. And I like to do it afterwards. You know, you, I mean, you can certainly do it before and after, but I like, I more likely do it afterwards. I'm going to pinch wipe some of this color off and you can even pick up like a little extender with it, which will help the color move a bit and stay wet and you can soften out some of your brush movements and stuff or water. If it, that doesn't move it very much, go back to water. Water always moves the acrylics quickly because it's the solvent. Extender does not. Extender is not a solvent for the acrylics. So it'll slow down the drying time, but it, it, it will sometimes move it, but it won't move it nearly as fast as water because it's not a solvent. So sometimes I leave a streak. Sometimes I just kind of model around to give it kind of atmosphere and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and you can do that just... Let some of this just kind of play and go out here like that, just right around him. And that's kind of neat. He pops off of that pretty nice. And then let's go, let's go paint these. Uh, let's use a flat or a filbert, whatever you want to do. Let's go back to my original filbert. We'll make a pine green, burnt sienna, a little yellow, and then a little light. Here a little, and if it's too green, add a bit more brown or burnt sienna here in yellow. And we'll make a light tan color, not as light as you see in the photo. We'll come back with that a bit. But let's just jet on some ideas here for the, these have got to be like spent Black Eyed Susans, I think. We'll just put in the idea. Ours out here look just like that after they're gone. But I can't swear to it, so so we'll put some of these on. And this is not as light as I'm going to go here. And we'll just use the chisel here. There we go. And uh, let's grab some Burnt sienna, a little green, and a little blue. Don't mod, don't mix it up real well. Just mo tap and model that together. And uh, we'll come in here and add the idea here of the little spent, little spent edges of the flower here. That one, a little more burnt sienna and yellow. Mm -hmm. Here, maybe a bit more yellow. Mm -hmm. Here, and you can just pull your finger through to, and make sure you wipe your finger <laughs> because it'll get dirty and drag color everywhere. Just pull your finger through. We're just going to keep these very simplistic. Here, I want the majority of the painting to be about the what's going on with the bird. You can put flowers into him like you've seen me do on other things, or you can just keep it really simplistic like this, which is what I'm going to do here. Just simplistic. There we go. And just break those up a bit. And... Um, Let's uh, get, you can see where some of the shadow marks are on this guy. So we'll just start coming down with a, don't do a solid line, just kind of, I kind of turn and twist my brush a little bit as it's going around so it makes a different kind of mark here. We just don't want to make the same mark absolutely everywhere. Break it up a bit. Sometimes I use, I do this with my, my painting knife, my palette knife, because I like the casual nature of it and keeping it casual. Now let's go lighter. Yellow and white right into some of that 
will go lighter and you may go two or three steps on this to get it as light as the, that one right there. That's up to you. I'll tap a little light, roll the brush a bit, keep it very simplistic back there on him. And let me show you, sometimes I do this with my knife and so I'll pick up a nice edge of the paint with my knife and I like pulling down like this and see it it makes a broken line like that onto the on to the uh, the branch there and then you can just take your brush and just kind of scrub it back and forth to uh, put some of that light value in there and you know like I might take a like a gray a green gray like this and break up that edge a bit there like that and see it this starts adding more interest to it so it's not just light dark so I'll, I'll come back and scrub it so sometimes I use the knife and sometimes I use this and what's most important about everything I teach you guys I tell you guys all the time is vary your marks that's the secret to being a great painter is you just don't want a solid line coming down here right now. You want all of these variations of these marks. And they can go even lighter yet. So right up in here where it's going to travel right up towards him, you can get that nice light and tap that through a bit. You know, and you can go to a smaller brush so you can get more detail. Or I like to, as I'm coming into the light here, just drag it. And see, you see me do this on landscapes and stuff where I drag that through and it puts that extra light right in there. But it's the light is all broken, if that makes sense. It's all what we call fractured here. And I like that. I like that look. So I'll come down here, drop that right into there, and then maybe take some of that grayed color, tap into that on the edge, scrub the edge of it a bit. And so I may take that grayed color like this, or you can pull a, or what would be really pretty is pull a, even though it's not there in the photo, pull some of the burnt sienna yellow out of the bird and push that right back into this part of the the stems of the spent stems of this uh, there of this black eyed Susan so that it gets a little difference to it just drag that edge there like that and you can so in the photo there they're a lot lighter but you're determining here just how much you're gonna light up you know that's up to you don't try to copy the photo paint a painting so I may want it a little lighter in through here but see I can do that and not lose too much I'm starting to you know I mean I have a nice difference here and uh, you know, this, and it's just how light you're gonna make it, guys. That's just all you know. That's all up to you. And don't don't make it so light that it just and it looks like it's outlined. So you want variations to these shadows coming in. So I might take a little blue and burnt sienna, a little green here, and. Uh, hit the shadow side here again just tapping through a bit just to uh, and and add it even though I don't see that on the uh, original I'm now painting for my painting what do I think that this thing needs to uh, to look good there to get that and see each time I touch it there it gets a little better but that's up to you now how much you're going to do on that maybe a little greens but and you know one good one really really good thing to do 
And I always say, and we do this in the Westerns, right? In all the Westerns, I tell you guys, is we pull the sky down into our subjects. Now, do you do it on this guy? Well, you know, do, you know, maybe some of you would like, oh, no, I want to do that. But on a Western, I do it in a heartbeat. I pull that blue from the sky, maybe just a touch of violet into this, just a touch here. And I would pull it into the bird. And so there would be just a little bit of the blue from that sky coming right down into here. You might pick up a, a, a mark or two of it right in here. Is it in, the, is it in the actual painting here? No. In the photo? No. But you're, what you're doing is you're harmonizing the bird with your background here. So I might have a mark or two of it right up here. Just boom, there's a little bit of that blue. But that would also work right down in here. Now look how that brings that harmony. It takes away some of the brown or the warmth of it and adds that blue in. Now this is something, this is why I always tell you guys, you know, watch all the videos because I'll use techniques in Westerns that I don't use and other things, but one of them is this blue, adding the blue like that. It just really works, and it really, really does. Let's add some lighter yellows here. Get some little spent edges here to this guy. And you can put that on and then uh, take a little blue burnt sienna paint back into them that's where you get your interest into that stuff paint back into it tap back into it let's take some of that tap right up into here push and tap and see that creates that variety of that mark see and let's just take a touch of that color even though you don't see it on the photo Let's just add it right in there. And that's how you do it. That's how it works. You know, and so let's um, take a bit more of this yellow and this light. Let's add a few little marks here. That coming out there on that one. Then let's go with our burnt sienna. A little bit of blue. Just tap through that. See, that creates that light and dark and that, that uh, interest there. You don't have to copy it. You, you know, when this is all done, said and done, the, you know, it's not going to be around. The photo's not going to be around, and they're just going to see this. There we go. That's just kind of neat. Here, a little more dark right in there. Tap through, maybe some yellow, not quite as light, a few little yellowy marks here. Out onto that one, maybe just a touch of light there. Here, tap that through, take some of that back out. Here we go, just a bit. Those nice little spent edges there. But you can, um, you know, take some of that light, clean up like the little tips here like this, and, you know, bring the final lights in. What you want to do, I don't think I'm going to give a whole bunch of final lights into that. Kind of like that little uh, brownish kind of color. But the, 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 the original there is quite a bit lighter. And so... You know, bring it up if you want to. Maybe even add a little more gray to that. Bring it up if you want to. You know, just, uh, I love that blue-gray working with those yellows and stuff. And uh, that just looks really, really good there. That's a little thick there, but it works. <laughs> it works. And I'm going to add, I'll take a little extender with this. And uh, maybe pull through just a bit. I love that blue going through my painting. It's 
just it's just it and it's gonna soften down here because you know that's just the the gray is gonna overtake that but that's just gonna be kind of nice there you could actually have a little lighter color on him there but yeah and then now that you have that if you want to pop him a little bit more you can go back to your white a little bit of blue right into that gray but let's go mostly white now very carefully where we're going to put this right up in here and bring him up some of his detailing up a bit more there and you can see that that really starts to lighten him up how much you do that's your choice this is contrast now to your painting so how much you do is your choice here so yeah that works always you always go back and revisit some areas this is what I call revisiting especially revisit your center of interest those of you to paint flowers with me roses with me you always hear me say revisit that queen the the flower that controls the composition so here I'm just revisiting just a bit and uh, getting a touch more light into those areas that I want it to happen and uh, maybe drag that across just a touch more there and uh, then a little bit of gray a little bit of blue gray here take some of that out there there we go maybe tap just a touch here and then I'm gonna I'm done playing with him I think it's got a good look to him there we go that's just kind of neat that's a good look to him you can like I say though you can lighten up through here a bit you can wash out this whole thing and you know one of the things that I'll do is like sometimes I'll say okay I'm gonna take a little water and I'll wash back down out through something like this softening it out okay so blurring this out see how that water it waters your solvent and even though this is you know been on here for quite a while I can soften back down through this right here like this soften this out because these acrylics don't harden up for 24 hours so you can do this kind of stuff I love this kind of stuff you know there and just blur that kind of stuff off there and that just pulls your eye right up right up into him okay so he's a lot of fun now um, for those of you that want to do some more intensive studies uh, here by the first of December so watch for or you know watch the channel watch for the first of December coming up is going to be a Christmas special where I'm going to be painting a gigantic uh, trumpeter swan and the cost of that class is going to go in half for Christmas here so we're going to try to keep it under $50 on some of those it'll be six to eight hours of video all in depth of painting some of the uh, different things we're going to do a big floral we're going to do a big uh, trumpeter swan I have that big cougar that I'm painting over there a lot of landscapes and stuff will be coming through that so we're going to release those videos on a Christmas special here right between right after the first of, the, of December probably the first week into Christmas so watch for those they're coming and we'll make announcements of it here and uh, they'll only be on sale for a couple of weeks so you're going to want to see them hopefully you'll want to paint along with them but they're all in depth really in depth classes okay all right hope you enjoy it I'll uh, see you guys on the next one and don't forget to drop a comment in there and hit that subscribe button and those comments and if you leave that comments and a like like is so important guys just click like on that video because that helps our distribution to get out there so that's the only thing we ask for I'll paint for you guys all day but just click a like on it and um, you know help us that way okay thanks so much and I'll see you on the next one